What is going on YouTube? It's Joey and today we're coming with my official week one predictions. I'll try to give week by week predictions as the NFL season goes on. I already did my preseason predictions, but since week one is literally pretty much like four days away now, it's September 5th at 520, so basically in exactly four days. Um, we're going to have the NFL season starting. Uh, unfortunately, I won't be able to stream that game because I'll be playing for my football team, my high school football team. So that's um, that's that. So we're going to get straight into this. So the Bills versus the Steelers, a very interesting matchup. Rematch from last year where obviously the Bills won that game. Uh, we're going to take the Bills because even though the Steelers defense is very talented their pass rush could really get after Josh Allen uh, their secondary you know lost some guys it's kind of iffy uh, Mika Fitzpatrick you could argue is the best safety in the NFL um, but there are so many good safeties it's just that offensive line it's a young offensive line versus a young defensive line what really is the key for the Bills this season is they need Jerry Hughes to Jerry Hughes, AJ Epinesa, uh, Gregory Russo, Ed Oliver. All those guys, they they need to step up and develop quickly to form a pass rush there for Buffalo. They got Tremaine Edmonds and a nice outside backer Matt Milano, who's a pretty good off the ball coverage guy. Jadavius White. Uh, Micah Hyde, Jordan Poyer. I think that defense can, they need to step up this year. Uh, they were good when Allen wasn't good, and then when Allen really ascends, they regress. So, you know, it's kind of a both sides of the ball need to come together. But the Bills, I, I don't think the Steelers have enough offensive firepower. It's an offensive league nowadays. I think the Bills front seven can get into rhythm versus the Steelers. I think they will win that matchup there. I think their defense is just good enough and their offense is very talented. Uh, the Steelers the secondary will be tested. So I'm going to take the Bills, although the Steelers could pull the upset, but it is in Buffalo and crowds are back. So I'm taking the Bills. Jaguars, Texans, Deshaun Watson not going to be playing. It's going to be the Jaguars. Even though the it's in week one, it's Trevor Lawrence's first start. He's already gotten warm in the preseason. And the Texans <laughs> can't rush the passer. The Jaguars' offensive line has looked pretty suspect. I will say the preseason offensive line was pretty bad. It's, it's pretty concerning. But I think they will get a week one win. The, the Texans secondary, outside of Justin Reed and Bradley Roby, is pretty bad. Uh, and even they, those two have their flaws, and they're not the best at their position. The Texans don't really have a pass rush after losing J.J. Watt. Whitney Merciless, like, they don't, they don't have much there on the front seven. They're really easy to run on. James Robinson is primed to have a big game. That The Jaguars are going to score a lot. And the Texans just don't have the QB, the match with Trevor. So I'm going with the Jaguars. They also don't have the weapons either. Brandon Cooks is really their only good receiver. And he's inconsistent. So, and that offensive line isn't that good. So they don't really have anything going for them. The Texans literally could finish with no wins. Um, the Browns versus the Chiefs. Uh, this, one, this one's a little bit tough here. That this one can go back and forth. Um, the Chiefs versus the Browns. The Browns can score a lot of points on the Chiefs. It's the battle of the trenches. It, I feel like the Browns are going to win that on the offensive line versus the defensive line quite easily. Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt, they're going to have a lot of open holes to run the ball on. And Mayfield throwing the rock. To, they lose Brashad Breeland, the Chiefs do. Uh, their secondary isn't going to have a fun time with OBJ now back. You have Landry and Hooper, although the Chiefs were able to win the playoff game with Henny uh, at the end. Anything is possible. 
the Browns, I don't know what their game plan will be. Will they run the ball, try to keep the clock running and keep it away from Mahomes? Or will they throw the ball and try to win in a shootout? That's going to be the interesting part. But the Browns, I'm telling you, are going to score a lot of points. Now, on the flip side, the Chiefs versus the Browns defense. Now, the left side of the Chiefs' offensive line is good with Orlando Brown, Joe Tooney. But they have a lot of young, unexperienced guys on that right side, including their new center situation. I think uh, their rookie center is going to be starting. Um, so then the right side is pretty unexperienced. So, you know, the Chiefs' offensive line is much improved, but, you know, that right side is weaker than the left side. But they are still a good offensive line unit. We'll see how it plays out, though. Behind Tyreek Hill, the Chiefs don't have much depth at wide receiver. So, Nicole Hardman is going to have to step it up. Uh, Demarcus Robinson, Byron Pringle. I, I, I like Byron Pringle. Um, <laughs> I, I like his name. Um, he's actually should get more playing time, in my opinion. But there's three solid right wide receivers, but nothing really too special. So uh, losing Sammy Watkins does hurt for the Chiefs. So if you can kind of replicate that game plan the Buccaneers did in the Super Bowl, where you play that cover two, take away Tyreek over the top, and you have elite linebackers like Levante David and Devin White to take over Kelsey, take away Kelsey over the middle, and you're able to get after Mahomes uh, and really shut them down with the front seven. That is how you stop the Chiefs. That is asking a lot, but that is how you stop it. And the Browns aren't as good as the Buccaneers defensively. They have a lot of talent. They actually come close, but there's a lot of new pieces week one. They won't be as good as the Buccaneers defensively. So... It's going to be it's going to be interesting, but Andy Reid always schemes something up. Um, so Miles Garrett, Jadavion Clowney needs to have his breakout year. You got JOK, Denzel Ward, John Johnson, Troy Hill. So that's secondary. The linebackers, I don't think they got the linebackers to match up with the Chiefs. I don't think a Ricky JOK is going to be matching up there. I don't know how much the Chiefs will run the ball in this one uh, with Clyde Edwards Hilaire. So it's really back and forth. I just think the Browns are the more talented roster. The Chiefs are just made up of a bunch of superstars like Pat Mahomes, Kelsey Hill, Chris Jones, and Matthew that are really excellent all together and win them a bunch of games. But I think they're going to take their L here in week one. Uh, the Browns have more talent defensively than the Chiefs. The Mahomes is better than Mayfield, but I think Mayfield could take a very big leap up this year. And OBJ coming back is a deciding factor. I don't think I think they've learned their lesson from earlier about just targeting and targeting OBJ. I think they're going to spread it around. So I'm going to give the Browns the win, although it could go back and forth here. Um, but you have the Dolphins versus Patriots with Mac Jones as your starter. No Cam Newton here. Um, so this changes quite a bit. The Dolphins secondary is going to win that Patriots receiving core over, I'd assume. So... I'm going to think that the Patriots will run the ball, and I'm going to say the Patriots will have success running the ball and rely on their tight ends. <clears throat> Brian Flores versus Bill Belichick, uh, two very interesting coaching matches. I just think the Patriots have the depth defensively, and they're going to get after Tua, and they're going to make it hard on the Dolphins to run the ball. I don't think the Dolphins will get much going on offense. That is what I am projecting. That Patriots defense, even though it was preseason, looked pretty good. Um, and Tua coming into his second year struggled a lot last year. I say give him one more year to prove something. He's got new weapons, Will Fuller, Jalen Waddell. It's just the Patriots, I think, are going to get after Tua with Matt Judon, Kyle Vandelay, 
and they're going to be covering the Dolphins receivers. The Patriots secondary is really deep, and their offensive line on offense. I think it's going to be a low-scoring type of game, but Mac Jones has looked really good in preseason, so I'm going to say the Patriots win this one. Um, Ravens versus Raiders. So this is an interesting matchup. The Raiders, I don't think they got the defense uh, to slow down the Ravens. The Ravens are run-heavy, run-first team. Uh, the Raiders, I just their defense, I don't think it's up for the task. And defensively, the Ravens have a nice secondary. Um, they're a really good defensive team. So I'm going to take the Ravens here. They also signed a uh, veteran, Justin Houston to help their pass rush. So they also got the rookie too. They drafted the rookie. So it was away. So we'll see what happens, but I'm taking the Ravens. Yeah, next team up, we got the Jets versus the Panthers. So Sam Darnold is facing his former team. So this one's going to be an interesting matchup here. The New York Jets with rookie quarterback, Zach Wilson who looks pretty good in the preseason, uh, is facing a Panthers team that is young and talented as well. So the Panthers' weakness is their offensive line, uh, and the Jets do got a good uh, front seven with the addition of Zach Sh Shaq Lawson, and you got Quinn and Williams. You also got C.J. Mosley coming back. But the Jets' secondary is terrible. Uh, they're their cornerback specifically, and the Panthers are deep at receiver. They also get Christian McCaffrey back, and I think Christian McCaffrey, along with all of the weapons Darnold has, is really going to make life easy for him. You look at the other side of the ball here. Uh, the Jets, other side of the ball, Zach Wilson, Corey Davis, and this offense trying to score points on the Panthers' defense, now that quarterback-receiver duo looked pretty good. But outside of Makai Becton and Elijah Vera Tucker, the Jets' O-line does lack some talent. So the Panthers with Derek Brown, Brian Burns, and now Hassan Reddick uh, rushing the passer with Jeremy Chin, who nearly won Defensive Rookie of the Year, who should be much better coming into year two. With J.C. Horn, they drafted, they got a young, good defense. So all around, the Panthers do have more talent than the Jets. So I'm gonna take the Panthers here. It could be a back and forth game, it could be an upset game, uh, but I am taking the Panthers there. So the Vikings versus the Bengals, I'm going to take the Minnesota Vikings. I don't think the Bengals are going to have enough talent to win. This could be a very interesting game. It, it is going to be for a fact. The Bengals could be scoring a lot on this Vikings secondary because the Vikings secondary does lack talent. Jeff Gladney, I think, got arrested and he's not playing. Uh, Cameron Dantzler is going to have to step up and Patrick Peterson is pretty much past his prime and washed. So, I'm going to stick with the Vikings here. I also think they're going to be able to run a lot with Dalvin Cook. Play action. Jesse Bates is a really good safety, but I don't think that this Bengals secondary is going to be struggling with Jefferson and Thielen off the play action with Cousins. Burrow, uh, Didio Hunter will be back. Um, so that could provide just an, the enough pass rush. I also think the Vikings are going to get interior pressure with Michael Pierce uh, and Dalvin Tomlinson. So that alone could really mess things up for the Bengals. And also Eric Kendricks, Anthony Barr uh, <laughs> on the middle linebackers could slow down Mixon. And Harrison Smith obviously is one of the best safeties there is. So... I'm going to take the Vikings, although the Bengals could pull the upset, but the Vikings do have the better team, so I'm going to stick with the Vikings. Seahawks versus the Colts. The Colts are 
an uncertain team right now. Uh, their defense does have a lot of talent. I think their pass rush is going to get after Russell Wilson. But I'm just going to accept Russell Wilson. I think the quarterback situation for the Seahawks is much better than the Colts right now. Uh, Russ does get hot first half of the year. And cools off second half, but I think he's going to get hot this half of the year. And I think he's going to buy time away from this pass rush and find his receivers downfield, uh, Metcalf and Lockett. And defensively, the Colts, or offensively, the Colts don't have enough weapons for the quarterback. And I'm going to take the Seahawks. I think they're going to be more prepared week one than the Colts are. So away, I think Seattle gets one on the road. So... The Chargers versus the football team. Justin Herbert has an improved offensive line. Still some holes, but it is improved. Um, the football team, though, I think they're going to have the best defense in the whole entire league with Chase Young, really one of the best pass rushers, and Montez Sweat, Deron Payne. Jonathan Allen, they have so much talent. Jamin Davis, Kendall Fuller in the secondary, uh, William Jackson, Cayman Curl. You just got depth in the secondary. The front seven is going to become after the Chargers and make life tough on them. Keenan Allen is one of the most underrated receivers there is. Mike Williams, the jump ball receiver himself. And... You go on the flip side, Joey Bosa is one of the best young pass rushers in football. Um, but outside of him, there's not much there. Uh, Kenneth Murray is going to have to step it up big time. And Asante Samuel, the rookie corner, is really going to have to step it up. The Chargers secondary is looking a little iffy. Uh, Derwin James, though... Is, is he going to stay healthy the whole year? He does make a big impact. Um, Ryan Fitzpatrick. So it's the strength, Chargers strength to offense, football team strength defense versus Chargers weakness defense versus football weakness offense. So it's going to be who wins the battle in the trenches. I think the football team is going to win the trench battle against the Chargers with the defensive line versus the offensive line. Um, but the Chargers defensive line versus the football team offensive line, I think the Chargers will win that one. Uh, outside of Brandon Scherf, the football team's O-line is pretty shaky. They got Terry McLaurin and they got Curtis Samuel, who should be making big plays in the secondary. I take Herbert over Fitzpatrick, um, but that secondary versus the football team weapons, I think the football team got the edge there. So I'm back and forth on this one. New head coach for the Chargers, Brandon Staley. It's week one. I think the football team is going to find the way to win. I think they'll force some turnovers. They'll make it hard for the Chargers to move the ball. And I think Fitzpatrick does have one of his good games. I don't think it's going to be a bad game. I think it's going to be a good game. He's going to find his receivers. And I think the football team is going to win that one. So you got Cardinals, Titans. Definitely a game I will be watching this coming Sunday. Because it's going to be on my TV. And like all the Cardinals games are. So... This game, Ryan Tannehill should be playing. He should. He's on track to return week one. If he doesn't, if he's not playing for some weird reason, then the Cardinals should have this one in the bag. But since Tannehill is playing, since Tannehill is playing, this gives the Titans a very good chance to win. It's an even battle. Uh, but the Titans offensively have one of the best offensive lines, one of the better offensive lines in the whole league, especially because Derrick Henry is running the rock and getting all these yards, the best rushing stats in the whole league. 
and everyone's like, I saw Derrick Henry like making these highlight runs and everything and all the speed for a big man. But you gotta give some credit to the offensive line, right? You gotta give some credit. And Taylor Lewan is back. Uh, wow, my finger was stuck. Taylor Lewan was back. So him, you got Roger Saffold, you got a really good run blocking unit. The Titans have struggled just stand back passing, just no play action. When the Derrick Henry slowed down, the Titans have struggled. But now you add Julio Jones, so you have him and AJ Brown on the outside. So Julio Jones could be an upgrade over Corey Davis. He is an upgrade over Corey Davis, even though Julio is past his prime. He did have some injuries last year, so. Titans fans are hoping he'll stay healthy. But the Cardinals, with losing Malcolm Butler, the former Titan, to retirement, which is very frustrating for the Cardinals fans. Uh, it's frustrating for me. I was looking forward to seeing how Malcolm Butler did. <laughs> I was looking forward to seeing Malcolm Butler versus the Seahawks. But, of course, he has to retire for personal reasons, which I understand. So, um... That's Cardinal secondary, I'm telling you right now, it's, it's going to be bad. They're relying on Marco Wilson, a rookie corner. Byron Murphy is really their best guy. He's a slot corner. And then they're relying on Robert Alford as their number two. So basically a fifth-round pick, a corner struggle in their first year in the NFL. And you're relying on a fifth-round pick, a rock corner prospect, to be your number one corner. So... It's not looking too promising there, so definitely the Titans do have the edge. But interior defensive tackle isn't too strong for the Cardinals, but their linebackers, Zayvon Collins, Isaiah Simmons, will help in at least slowing down Henry. But I think the Titans are going to be scoring a lot of points this game. So you go on the flip side of the ball, Bud Dupree now, if they let Harold Landry rush the passer, Danico Autry inside, which was really good run and pass game, will give him a real force inside. So that's going to make it tough on the Cardinals. But the Titans secondary is quite vulnerable. So it's going to be a shootout. I'm going to go with the Titans here, though, because of the loss of Malcolm Butler and all of their weapons on offense. I think the Titans will outscore the Cardinals. Uh, I like Mike Vrabel over Kingsbury in the coaching assignments. That is what it might come down to. So, Titans over Cardinals. This one can go either way. But for now, I'm going to say Titans win in week one. So the Broncos versus the Giants is an interesting matchup we'll get on Sunday. The Broncos don't got a quarterback. Their weakness is quarterback. Everything else is looking pretty good in terms of receivers. Cortland Sutton was looking good in the preseason. Also, Teddy Bridgewater was throwing dimes in the preseason. But again, it's just preseason against a lot of backups. So who knows? But... Backups still train the same way, and they still go through the same things that starters do in the NFL. It's just the starters are better skill-wise, and it's all the details they do that separates them from the rest. So there's that. Uh, the Giants' defense, though, I think they do have the talent to slow down this Broncos' offense. But this Broncos' defense also has the pass rushing they might have the best pass rush duo there is in Bradley Chubb and Vaughn Miller. Both, can they stay both on the same field at the same time? Can they both stay on the field at the same time is what I'm trying to say. Um, there is that question. But for week one, at least for the first play, they will be um, not trying to jinx anything. <laughs> Uh, but the Broncos do have a very deep secondary. 
I don't. I still to this day don't understand why the Broncos didn't pick Justin Fields. I get Sertan is a very polished cornerback prospect, and he's a really hard to pass on. But Justin Fields is right there. Like I'm still mad at the Broncos for that and letting the Bears take him. Uh, near there, Thor is there. <laughs> I don't know. But the Broncos with Kyle Fuller and Patrick Sertan and all all that talent plus you got Justin Simmons is a lockdown secondary like that secondary is pretty good so the Broncos with all this talent on defense against that Giants offensive line which has been struggling forever now and should still struggle Saquon Barkley is back for the Giants I'm thinking this is going to be a defensive game. It's going to be more of a defensive game. The Giants have all the talent on skill positions in the world. It's just, can Daniel Jones in that offensive line put it together? Um, that secondary, though, for the Broncos, again, has the talent to slow down those skill positions and vice versa. So the Giants are very well coached. I think they are more well coached than the Broncos are at this point. The Joe Judge did a very good job coaching last year. So Teddy Bridgewater is going to protect the ball and make those dink and dunk plays, but he's not gonna make those big plays like Daniel Jones will be Daniel Jones would turn it over. So for now I'm really back and forth on this one. I really am Saquon Barkley, I don't know. I'm taking the Broncos just because I think their defense will force turnovers on Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones has like 22, force, 22 fumbles and like 20 something interceptions in his first few years. Like, what I'm trying to say is Daniel Jones is a turnover machine. So that's why I'm picking the Broncos. So. This one definitely could go back and forth. A lot of interesting matchups here in week one. Uh, but I'm I'm sticking with the Broncos. Cowboys, Buccaneers, Zach Martin is out for this game. It's their best player on the team. Mm, no, it's probably Dak. But one of their best players on the team. He's arguably the best right guard in football. So when you lose that and the Buccaneers have the best front seven in football, that is very concerning and that goes against your case. Micah Parsons has been looking good though. He's been looking good, flying all over the field, making plays left and right, but it's preseason. So again, but the Buccaneers are just the most talented team there is. Tom Brady is going to throw for a lot of yards. The Bucken the Cowboys have a terrible run defense. Hopefully the Buccaneers run the ball more this year because uh, my running backs got injured in both fantasy leagues. I had Travis Etienne in one fantasy league, and I had J.K. Pommins in the other fantasy league, and they both got injured, so now I'm relying on Ronald Jones in both fantasy leagues. So you better remember to run the ball this year, Tampa Bay. Please, you have a great offensive line. You're going to win this battle easily in the trenches, so I think it's going to be a blowout. I'm going to say like 38 to, like, no, 37 to 20 Tampa Bay. I think it's going to be that type of game. The Cowboys will score some, but the Buccaneers are way too good on both sides of the ball. Front seven, offensive line, receivers, quarterback, coaching staff. They won the Super Bowl for a reason, and they're only getting better with all their starters. So, Buccaneers easily. Eagles versus Falcons. Another interesting matchup. Uh, Kyle Pitts makes one great play in the preseason. Everyone's, you know, like they're, they're all getting hyped. <laughs> so, you know, you gotta, you gotta chill on that one. The Calvin Ridley, though, Calvin Ridley, Kyle Pitts, plus Hayden Hurst is a good backup tight end. Can it offset Julio, though? The addition of Kyle Pitts, can it replace Julio Jones? 
big shoes to fill. The Falcons are pretty bad defensively. They're secondary. When A.J. Terrell is your best corner, you've got a problem there. You got Randy Jarrett, Deion Jones, uh, some talent still there on the defense, but it's still pretty lackluster. The Eagles on the right side of the offensive line are good. Devontae Smith has been looking pretty bad so far. Uh, just issues. He, he hasn't been really looking good, not doing well at all in the preseason. So we'll see if that translates to the regular season. Him and Jamar Chase have been struggling so far. Uh, so that's not good signs for the Bengals or the Eagles. But I'm taking the Falcons, actually. They might choke a lead. Uh, I just think the Falcons, Matt Ryan has a big game. I think Kyle Pitts has a great rookie debut. Calvin Ridley is a really underrated receiver. I think they just have the offensive firepower. The Eagles pass rush, though, could definitely cause problems for the Falcons. It's back and forth, but the addition of Steven Nelson to the Eagles secondary was pretty nice. So that might swing it over this way, but I'm actually going to go with the Falcons. So Lions 49ers. The Lions offensive line is great, uh, especially with the addition with Penny Sue. DeAndre Swift might be a sleeper candidate to have a breakout year. He might just come out of nowhere and have like an 1,000-yard season, and people will be like, oh, I didn't expect that. Uh, so, I'm telling you right now, him running behind that offensive line might just have him a breakout year. Uh, in his second year, he's still a talented running back, so might have a breakout year. But the 49ers have a stacked front seven to match that line's offensive line strength, and that is their only strength. So, Kyle Shanahan, way better coach than Dan Campbell. The 49ers just picked up Josh Norman, a veteran corner, exactly what they needed. Even though Josh Norman is past their prime, or past his prime, $2.8 million isn't that much uh, in terms of football money and cap space goes. So that is a pretty cheap bargain for the 49ers. They also are going to win the battle with the offensive line versus the Lions D-line. Uh, Trey Lance, Jimmy Garoppolo, whoever starts, doesn't matter. They're going to be throwing for a ton of yards. The Lions were one of the worst defenses last year. The Lions, outside of DJ, TJ Hawkinson, don't really have much going for them in terms of passing game. So the 49ers are going to win. Lots of Robert Solo, though, is tough. But the 49ers are one of the better rosters there is, and the Lions are one of the worst rosters there are. So... I'm saying like 49ers, like 41 Lions, no, 49ers 35, Lions 13 type of game. That's what I'm going to say there. The Packers versus the Saints, it's going to be played in Jacksonville um, due to the hurricane. Prayers to everyone who's dealing with the hurricane. Hopefully you do better, uh, and hopefully the hurricane situation will go for the better for all people. But anyways, the Packers versus the Saints. The No Michael Thomas. Uh, so Jair Alexander is going to have a field day. But Callaway did look really good in the preseason. though. But that's just preseason. So the game plan is going to be abuse the running game with Alvin Kamara and get that going. And I, that's actually a way the Saints could potentially pull off an upset because their offensive line is arguably the best in the league. You've got Rams check. You've got a bunch of great guys. Um, so that is the area the Packers outside of Kenny Clark are that good on the defensive line. So Jameis Winston is going to be well protected. That starting offensive line for the limited time they did play looked really incredible still. They're so well coached by Sean Payton. No Michael Thomas, but Alvin Kamara, they're going to be leaning on him heavily. Jameis Winston might have just met his match and 
Sean Payton, he is looking more aggressive. They might have some sort of deep pass game. Um, Trey Cron Smith's going to have to break out, and so is Callaway um, and any other receivers. And defensively, the Packers are the Packers are going to be missing David Bakhtiari for like six weeks, so that is very scary. And but the O line is very well coached, but it still has a lot of question marks when you lose your two best players on the offensive line, Coy Lindsley forever. Bakhtiari for six weeks. It's concerning there. So I think Aaron Rodgers is going to deliver some dimes, though. I'm going to take the Packers outside of Marshawn Lattimore and Marcus Williams. That secondary is pretty leaky. Demario Davis is great, and Cameron Jordan is great. Uh, the Saints could pull off the upset, but the Packers are just too good everywhere. Too many superstars. And Jameis Winston versus Aaron Rodgers. I'm taking a rod all day. So you come to our final game here to predict the Bears versus the Rams. Who will win? You got Matthew Stafford making his debut, Justin Fields making his debut, Allen Robinson versus Jalen Ramsey. Uh, Matt Nagy is just not the play caller. He's not the play caller, although Justin Fields is looking very good. And I'm still very angry that the Broncos didn't draft Justin Fields and let him get to the Bears. But that is besides the point. Uh, <laughs> the Bears defensively have lost talent. They still got Khalil Mack, but they lost Fuller. And they've just been declining every year since they made the playoffs. So... I'm going to take the Rams, Aaron Donald, and that pass rush is going to wreak havoc on the Bears offensive line, which is the weakness. Justin Fields is going to have a tough time in this one against a very good Rams defense. Jalen Ramsey is going to lock up Allen Robinson more likely than not. And Darnell Mooney versus Darius Williams. Darius Williams is talented enough to slow him down, and then that pass rush is going to be coming in. The run game might be the priority for the Bears, but they're going to struggle with that. David Montgomery is pretty good, though. But Matthew Stafford is going to throw for quite a bit for Robert Woods and Cooper Cup. Sean McVay, also a very better, a better coach than Matt Nagy, so... The Rams are going to win that week one. So that is going to be it. Uh, my official week one predictions. My week two predictions are going to look different than the preseason pre-made ones I made. So these predictions are going to get updated as the season progresses. And I'll try to have uh, week recaps too if I have time. So thank you all so much for watching. Like and subscribe. Road to 400. Uh, share and everything. I'll see you in the next one. Uh, peace out. Let me know what you think. Do you agree? Disagree? Everyone has their own opinions. It's all right. So, see ya.